My fellow countrymen, I would like to make a statement in connection with the events that have taken place in the Donetsk region and in the city of Slavyansk. Blood was shed today. From now on, the situation in our country is fundamentally different. Ukraine is on the brink of a civil war. The Kiev cabal has given a criminal order to use force and send regular troops against civilians in southeastern Ukraine. I'd like to remind everyone that when we were in Kiev, we did not use such methods even against radicals and extremists. Ukraine's socio-economic situation is quickly deteriorating. The country is spiraling towards inevitable bankruptcy. Let us recall how it all started. It started with Maidan, where a group of nationalists imposed its will on the majority of Ukrainians, using violence and later even weapons. The people of Ukraine will never put up with such authoritarianism, especially coming from nationalists. People living in various regions are looking for ways to protect themselves and the future of their children. They want to live in a free country, speak their native tongue, have a voice, elect local officials. These are the demands of the regions. How can you replace dialogue with the methods they have offered, the language of machine guns and armor? Don't they understand that what the country needs the most today is not a hurried presidential election, but a wide dialogue that would lead to consensus? More power should be delegated to the regions. People should have the right to elect their regional leaders, both in western and eastern Ukraine. The regions don't want to put up with the dictate of the central government. That's why the only acceptable solution today is to call a referendum. That would calm the situation in the country down, stop the civil war and preserve Ukraine from a breakup. After that, a new constitution should be adopted. And only then should there be parliamentary and presidential elections. This is a legitimate and fair demand by the Ukrainian people who seek protection against authoritarianism, lawlessness and humiliation. One more thing. By dismissing the legitimate demands of the Ukrainian people as separatism and describing an insignificant group of people as revolutionaries, they intentionally divide our society, furthering the country's disintegration. I would like to say a few words about the steps being taken by the so-called Ukrainian authorities who will sooner or later be held accountable for the decisions they are making today. I can tell you straight away, you will be prosecuted. I'm talking first and foremost about Avaka, Nalivaychenko and the security force officers who carry out their criminal orders. As commander-in-chief, I tell the troops, police and security service officers, don't follow their criminal orders. Don't shoot at Ukrainians. People will never forgive you if you do. Also, I would like to mention that the United States was directly involved in the recent events. Through diplomatic channels and intelligence services, it is not just playing an active role. It tells people what they should do and how they should do it. According to the reports I have received from Ukraine's security services and other government institutions, CIA Director Brennan has visited Kiev. He had meetings with the illegitimately appointed chiefs of Ukraine's security agencies, including Avakov, Nalivachenko, Gvozd, and Yeryemo, as well as the so-called acting president, Turchinov. It was after these meetings that, this, that the decision to use force in eastern Ukraine was then made. Basically, Mr. Brennan sanctioned the use of force and instigated bloodshed. Thus, the United States also played a role in unleashing this civil war. The so-called pro-Western government has been working in Kiev for two months. The lives of ordinary people keep getting more and more difficult. 
The West promises to help, but has done nothing yet. I appeal to the people of Ukraine, don't let the pseudo-advocates of Euro-integration destroy our country. Preserve the unity of Ukraine. Defend your future. The people of Ukraine alone have the right to decide the future of their country. Thank you. Russia TV, Veronika Bogma. You have the Prosecutor General and the Interior Minister sitting next to you. We would really like to hear from Mr. Pshonka and Mr. Zaharchenko about what they think about the current situation. I'd say that legal and social institutions are intentionally being destroyed in Ukraine today. They're being destroyed by the self-appointed authorities. Total disrespect for law has become commonplace. Let me give you a few examples. From a legal point of view, illegal orders come from illegitimately appointed officials, specifically to Chinov, Avakov, Nalivaychenko, and Magnitsky. We hear that Magnitsky has told the prosecution service and police to stop investigating attacks on police officers who were killed or injured while protecting constitutional order. We hear there are plans to stage provocations at the border in eastern provinces for the purpose of discrediting the Russian army. The media reported today that Yulia Tymoshenko was present at the meeting of the National Security and Defense Council. This report comes from Taras Chernovil. She's not a member of the government. She's not a member of Ukraine's Security Council. And yet she was present at the meeting. There are many examples like that. You can find plenty of them in open sources. So, as Ukraine's interior minister, I can say that the people who give unlawful orders will certainly be prosecuted. And to my colleagues, police officers, I want to say, don't follow such unlawful orders, because otherwise you will certainly be held accountable. Thank you. I would like to remind everybody that the top priority for Ukraine's legitimate authorities last December and then in January and February this year was to find a peaceful solution to the crisis. You remember talks with the opposition, talks where foreign officials were present as well. You remember how police officers stood on Maidan without weapons for 90 days. You remember two amnesties announced by the parliament, in which 300 offenders detained on Maidan were pardoned. You remember all these facts, which prove that Ukraine's legitimate authorities wanted to resolve the situation peacefully. I can give you many other examples of the things that Ukraine's legitimate authorities did. But you know all these facts. I just briefly reminded you about them. Ukraine's legitimate authorities made their decisions independently. Unlike the current authorities, they did not act out other people's scenarios. The main characteristic of the current illegitimate authorities in Kiev is that they violate law. And we see these obvious violations. How did the dialogue with the legitimate authorities start on Maidan last November? You remember Molotov cocktails. You remember calls to break into government buildings in various regions. You remember calls to seize the security service headquarters, the interior ministry, prosecution service offices, etc. Calls to take up arms and seize power. Illegitimate authorities are violating official and moral laws. They no longer remember that they came to power as a result of a coup. The Kyiv authorities should remember that you can first disregard the constitution and then demand that others abide by the law. The current illegitimate authorities manipulated laws, moral principles, people's minds, and they are still doing that today. I think you will agree that this is why our country is on the verge of civil war today. Blood was shed today and this on Palm Sunday, an important day for Orthodox Christians. And that's the day that the illegitimate authorities have picked to launch an anti-terrorist operation that results in bloodshed. What about morality? What about ethics? Who will give an account for all that? They violate law, they violate moral principles, they don't have ethical principles. It is necessary to restore law, but the current authorities continue to break it. It is necessary to address crucial issues, such as talks, the referendum, the things President Yanukovych talked about, and resolve the situation peacefully. Instead, the illegitimate Kyiv authorities send armor, 
helicopters are hovering over cities and towns. They open fire. And they do all that openly, violating Ukrainian laws. They just ignore them. In order to find a compromise, the authorities need to have courage and fortitude, but they lack both. They are unable to deal with the situation in a peaceful way, by meeting with the Ukrainian people and solve the problems according to Ukraine's constitution, which says that supreme power belongs to the Ukrainian people. The illegitimate authorities in Kiev simply forgot about it. Power is all they care about. If they continue to defy laws, if the illegitimate authorities in Kiev don't listen to reason, if they continue to violate Ukraine's constitution and other laws, this will not help to solve the situation peacefully. Thank you.